Well, good morning. So let me tell you something I know about Christians. There are a lot of Christians who don't think that you can be sad. And little do they know that one of the shortest verses in Scripture is, ready? Jesus wept. So if you can say those two words, you just memorized a passage today. Don't be afraid to face uncomfortable emotions with people. Um, One of the things I love is that it's okay for people to say, you know, this is how I'm feeling. And (laughs) how they're feeling may not be correct to what's going on around them, but how they're feeling is just how they're feeling. And so we need to understand that when it comes to listening to people, that we can't always go, cheer up. But my dog just died. Oh, it's okay. You know, I mean, those are the people that you slap. Okay, if you get a chance. Uh, Did I say that out loud? That meant to stay in. So, you know, uh, a few years ago, or a few weeks ago, I was sitting out uh, in Cocoa Village. It was a beautiful day. Unlike today, you know, you come down. Randy's mom comes down, brings the cold weather with her. She's going home tomorrow. It's going to be perfect on Tuesday, just so you know. So thank you for the blast of cold but I told her at least you don't have to drive in the slush here that's the change and what did you say it was there 14 below zero so this is a sauna she's gonna you're gonna find her out by the pool today later so I don't know if you have ever seen noise canceling headphones I love these I got these for Christmas last year by the way you can get them remanufactured or whatever they're a lot cheaper okay sorry anyway so uh, but one of the awesome things about them is you put them on and you don't hear your family You don't hear people. If you're on the plane, you don't hear the screaming baby behind you. You hear whatever you're playing. It's awesome. But there's a problem. I'm jumpy. So I was sitting by by the water last week and and working on some stuff. And a guy came up and said, hey, (laughs) next to me. And that's when I heard him. And I went, ah, in his face. But that's not the worst time. The worst time, I was actually jogging on the bridge in Titusville, which is one of those kind of high bridges, and I know it's hard to imagine me jogging. Just imagine a really old person fleeing from a crime. That's what I look like when I'm running, okay? And, uh, I mean, old people uh, have pulled over and said, are you okay, sir? Uh, Just so you know. So anyway, so I was running, and I was thinking about uh, a friend who had told me a story about somebody getting mugged at the bottom of the bridge. So that's going through my mind as I'm running up the bridge, And all of a sudden, out of the corner of my eye, I see a shadow next to me. I have my headphones in, and I see a shadow next to me. I go like this, and there is a person's face right here looking at me. And I did what any normal human would do. I did, ah! And he did what every normal human would do and went, ah! Back at me in each other's face. I mean, this was before COVID, right? But we were screaming this far from each other "Ah!" because I didn't see him coming. And it freaked me out. And then we both started laughing, which I thought was awesome because he could have punched me in the face. So that was good. By the way, my dad was so jumpy that if you uh, startled him, you might get punched. That was always fun. Um, I can remember at least once, you know, at night going, dad, I don't feel good. Waking up on the floor and going, mom, I don't feel good. Right? So you learn. So here's the thing. A lot of us, because we've been hurt or because people have uh, used something we said against us uh, to, you know, to them and then they used it against us. If we're not careful, we become uh, like joy in that video clip where all we want is, you know, don't tell people how you're really feeling. Just kind of overlook it. Hey, how you doing? Oh, I'm blessed. I'm just I'm just great. And let me tell you what the enemy will do with that. That whole time that you're telling other people you're great, you know how you really are. And you also know that nobody else knows how you are. So what happens is you feel very alone and very lonely, even if you're around people. And there's times where the enemy says something to you that you just need to let your friends know, you know, I'm feeling kind of and fill in the blank. This woman that we're going to look at today, we're going to look mostly at the woman at the well, and I'm going to give you a little background passage before that, but, uh, you know, she was out in the middle of the day. Nobody draws water in the middle of the day unless they're avoiding people. And the reason you avoid people is because when you get around people, you think what they're thinking about you. And, of course, we find out this woman had a history and a past, so I'm sure her thoughts fought her often. 
But what's amazing about this passage, it's thousands of years old, and yet in the middle of this passage, Jesus demonstrates to us ways we can connect with each other. And so we're going to look at some things today, and as I talk about disconnection habits, some of you are going to go, oh no, I did that this week 42 times. And as I look at connection habits, I hope that you will go, no matter where you're at, i got to work on that one. There's one that I could do better at. Whether it's at work or at home, uh, whether it's with the people you love, or just even friends that are just social with you, my hope is that just like Jesus, we'll become better at listening. We're going to talk about taking time to value people, discovering ways to relate, and then getting you to the point that we can discuss deep and spiritual truth. So let's pick up with number one, how do we listen? We dedicate time to value. Now, let me show you the big difference between Jesus and religious leaders. Here it is in Luke chapter 15. I'm going to read verse 1, not read the story in the middle, and then verse 7, just to show you the contrast. But the Pharisees and the teachers of the law muttered. I love that word, muttered. Basically means complained, grumbled. This man welcomes sinners and eats with them. I tell you that in the same way, Jesus says later, there'll be more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous persons who do not need to repent. Now, this is sarcasm, just so you know. Does anybody really think that the religious people didn't need to repent in this story? They needed to repent just as much as the sinner. They just didn't know that they were sinners. They thought they had their act together because they wore long tassels and they did religious things and they did all the right things, but their hearts were far from God. They did not love people. And Jesus says, we rejoice when I go out of the way to find the one lamb that wandered off and bring it home. Jesus cares about each individual. So if right now you're running from God and you're separated from God, you need to know he's not in heaven going, well, you straighten up. He's just waiting for you, like the prodigal father, to come home. So let's look at this story today, and I hope you can understand what Jesus was doing that is so different from what anybody else in his day was doing and how he loved people, no matter how broken and messed up they are. Now, Jesus sits down with the well in the middle of the day. It says in the scripture that he was tired from his journey. I don't know about you. When I'm tired from a journey, I don't want to talk to people. I don't want to listen to people. And I want a Snickers. Jesus was also most likely very hungry because the disciples went to find kosher food, which they couldn't find in Samaria because the Samaritans basically worshipped a different way than the Jews. There were actually civil wars over the way they worshipped. We don't have time for that today. But Jesus could have sat down knowing this woman's history, and when she came up, he could have easily just said to her, hey, you got a bunch of husbands and you are messed up. But that's not what he did. Listen. John 4, we're starting in 9 and 10. The Samaritan woman said to him, because he asked her for a drink, you're a Jew, I'm a Samaritan woman, how can you ask me for a drink? And then the author gives us a little Note in the background, for Jews do not associate with Samaritans. By the way, it was bigger than that. Jewish men, especially religious leaders, didn't even want to talk to women, including their wives, in public. Nice. So not only is Jesus talking to a woman at a well, he's also talking to a woman who feels like she's at war with the Jews. And she says, how can you talk to me? And then Jesus said this, I love it. If you knew the gift of God and who it is that asks you for a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water, water that never ends. And by the way, Jesus said, if you knew the gift, he was talking about himself. You know, John 3, 16. Did you know Jesus is the one who gave us John 3, 16? For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son. Jesus gives us that verse where he talks about, I'm the gift. To you, And he says to this woman, if you realize that the gift is sitting next to you, you would take the gift. Why? Because the gift, that water never ends. And what Jesus knew is what she was really thirsty for because she was in there in the middle of the day. She was going through life, looking for love in all the wrong places. Looking for love in too many faces. Searching, okay, I won't go on. Right? 
She was, but she was that description. She thought, I'm going to find love somewhere, and Jesus says, the gift is with you, and it brings water, the real water you need. Not this stuff that just quenches your thirst, this stuff that quenches your heart thirst. Now, let me give you some connection and disconnection habits. Let's start with the disconnection from this part of the story between the Pharisees grumbling. If you want to not listen to somebody, the first thing you need to do is just criticize them. I can tell you right now, if you bring a friend to church and the first thing they do is sit down and go, your pastor's wearing jeans, I can guarantee that they probably won't hear a thing I say the rest of the time because they're worried that I'm wearing jeans or that my hair's standing up or that I said something goofy at the beginning. I don't like a church that has jokes. Wait, <clears throat> Brian, I will specify that for you. I don't like a church that has jokes. How's that? Inch by inch, it's a cinch. Yard by yard, it's really hard. All right, so disconnection habits, grumbling. By the way, if you missed the beginning of the service, just ask somebody later. Generalizations. We judge people based on how they look. We judge people based on what we think about them. We judge people. Way Listen, people are judging people on whether they're wearing a mask or not. Listen, you're welcome to wear a mask in our church, and you're welcome to not wear a mask in our church, and I'm not going to look at you and go, I can't believe you. And if you look at anybody that way, you just did this. If you look at somebody and say, well, you're not vaccinated, you're an idiot, you just did a generalization. Guess what? Maybe they have a reason they're not vaccinated. You, you don't know. So let's quit doing this generalization of people based on what they do or don't do or who they vote for or who they don't vote for. Did I say that out loud? I'm sorry. We separate by view. I view this, you view that. How dare you? You're on the other side. Devaluation. They looked, they said, how can he talk to these Sinners. Exactly. How can he talk to these messed up people? By the way, if you haven't figured it out yet, we're all messed up. That was Jesus' point in the story. That's why he says one person that repents instead of all these other people that don't need to repent. And Jesus was saying that don't need to repent. And then in a hurry. This is probably the biggest sin of most of us, if we're honest. We're in such a big hurry that we don't want to take time to really get to know people regardless. So what do we do? We need to learn to rejoice. We need to learn to rejoice over people. We need to look at them individually as individuals. Yes, they may have some things that you think, well, they're dumb as a bag of hammers. Absolutely. I hope that every week one of your thoughts is, man, if our pastor can follow God as dumb as he is, I definitely can. I hope at some point you kind of go, huh, I still, you know, I still got something out of that. I don't know how. Because you learn to care about the person themselves. Connected by care. Do you really care for people? Or are you just putting up with them? By the way, if you're married and not careful, you will become business partners. You'll go from really caring for each other then to just trying to get things done. I, listen, during the hardest times of your life, when you're trying to get kids out the door, when you're trying to get somewhere, when you're trying to do something, please do your best to connect in the middle of those times. Learn to see God's value in people. That's why the Bible says, God so loved the world. He loves you. Yes, you're messed up and broken, and you fail and falter, and so does your friend. And your friend, you ready, might be a little more messed up than you in certain areas. Because I almost guarantee that there's one area that your friend has together that you don't. But you're not going to compare that because that would make you be down on yourself, right? And then finally, quality time. By the way, quality time often remind, re, uh, needs quantity time. But you can't be staring at your phone going, uh-huh, 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 uh-huh. Every once in a while, you should just put your phone in a drawer. Don't tell my wife I said that. Number two. Discover ways to relate. Now, I started watching basketball in the late 80s for two reasons. Number one, the guys I was staying with for the summer were, were watching basketball. They were watching the playoffs. I think it was Michael Jordan and Charles Barkley, and I think Pippen was there. I'm trying to think of who I can't remember. But I didn't know anything about basketball. I knew about football. I didn't know anything about basketball. So I watched the games. I learned about basketball. But here's what I discovered really quickly. I was a youth pastor. And I discovered that there were kids who visited youth group who wouldn't talk to me at all unless I mentioned Michael Jordan. And all of a sudden, their eyes lit up and we had something to talk about. So we could talk about unimportant things. 
so that we could talk eventually about important things. I looked for ways to relate. Sir, the woman said, verse 11, you have nothing to draw with and the well's deep. Where can you get this living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob? And if you don't understand what she's doing here, is she saying, who do you think you are? By the way, if you want to really shut down a conversation, say to somebody, who do you think you are? That's a good way to just stop the conversation right there. And that's what she was trying to do. He gave us the well, he drank from himself, and so did his sons and his livestock. So who do you think you are? And then Jesus, a few verses later, goes back to what he was talking about originally and doesn't follow her on that tangent. He said, hey, you, you need the living water, here's why. And she goes, I'll go, you know, tell your husband. She says, I, I don't. He said, the fact is, you've had five husbands, and the man you now have is not your husband. What you've said is quite true. Sir, the woman said, I can see you are a prophet. So basically she says, you got me there. That's exactly right. But she doesn't stop there. Our ancestors worshipped on this mountain, but you Jews claim that the place where we must worship is in Jerusalem. She now tried to get him in a political argument, one of the easiest ways to get somebody off track. Can I tell you a secret that maybe you don't know and a lot of churches think? Did you know that Jesus is not an American? I know that's a shocker to some churches. Did you know right now overseas they're worshiping the same Jesus that you worship and they don't have an American flag on their lapel? Jesus looks at that woman and she says, Hey, our politics are different. I'm right about this. And listen to what Jesus does. This is awesome. She's like, we worship on this mountain, you worship on that one. Listen, woman, Jesus replied, by the way, let me just a little hint for you men. Unless you're Jesus. <laughs> okay, do I need to say the rest? <laughs> Carl, you don't come home and go, woman, that's, you are going to be hungry that night. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> he knows how to cook. Oh, you're really dead now. All right, so, woman, Jesus replied, believe me. Listen, a time is coming where you'll worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. Eric, I think my political party's the best. You know, Jesus doesn't care what political party you're on. <gasps> he doesn't. But I thought I went to a conference and they used the Bible to say that Jesus was American. Jesus says, hey, it's bigger than our countries. It has to do with the spirit. It has to do with the truth. See, we can worship God with spirit and truth even when we disagree on politics. <gasps> we can worship God with spirit and truth even if your team lost the football game last night. I'm so sorry, Amy Sue. She's the biggest Green Bay fan we have in this church. Spoiler alert. Did somebody tape the game? Oh, you didn't know there was a game? Well, we got to work on you. Let me show you the disconnection and the connection habits. Here they are. We'll go through these quickly. Talking down to others. Hey, you want to stop a conversation? Say, who do you think you are? Using others. I just came to get water. Just give me my water and be quiet. <laughs> Foolish debates. We argue about stuff that won't matter three years from now. Did you know Billy Graham told people to vote for Richard Nixon? He said it was the worst mistake he ever made. And from then on, he didn't talk politics anymore. Why? Because he realized the kingdom was bigger than this kingdom. Foolish arguments. We argue about the dumbest thing. We'll argue about football teams. We'll argue about the weather. We'll argue about, you fill in the blank, truth without love. Jesus could have started by talking to her about, hey, you messed up woman. This is what you did last night. But he started by talking to her about important things. Here's some connection habits. Encourage others. Serving others. Looking for unifying conversation. It doesn't mean you can't have tough conversations. And it doesn't mean that you can't have a political opinion. You are welcome to your political opinion. You are welcome to watch the news. You're welcome to watch any news channel you want. Just don't put that news above Jesus. Unifying conversations. And don't put your news above people. And then the truth in love. It's okay to say the truth. Hey, I don't like this. Okay. By the way, a lot of times when we want to tell people what they can't believe... We're the dumb ones. They say, I believe this. And we go, 
Okay. I've said that a lot this year. Okay. I had a guy tell me the earth was flat this year. He works at the Space Center. I, I wasn't so worried about the first comment. It was the second one. So you're sending rockets in space over flat earth? Yes. Okay. What was I going to say to him? Don't take a cruise. I don't know what. Okay, number three. Sorry, I got way off on that. Number three. Talk about tangents. All right, number three. Discuss deep and spiritual truths. Listen. When you get to know people and love them, there comes a time that when they're struggling... You can sit and talk to them. If you really get to know people, then they'll be willing to tell you where they're struggling so that then you can say, I'm so sorry. I hurt for you. All the time people come to me and say, Pastor, I haven't gone to church in years because Christians fill in the blank. And here's what I say. I'm so sorry. I've been hurt by Christians too. There are some evil people in the world that call themselves Christians. There are people who aren't Christians who are pretending to be Christians right now. How do I know that? Because Jesus said people are going to get to heaven and go, I healed in your name. And Jesus is going to go, not in my name. Go away. Listen to what he says next. God is spirit. His worshipers must worship in spirit and truth. And then listen to this. The woman said, I know the Messiah called Christ is coming. When he comes, he will explain everything to us. Then Jesus declared, I, the one speaking to you, am he. Jesus' whole purpose of sitting down and asking for water, of having an honest discussion with this woman about politics, was to get her to the point of saying, I'm what you need. You've been seeking love in all the wrong places, but I'm what you need. Listen to what the Bible says in Colossians 3.14, over all these virtues put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. This word for binds in the Greek is really cool. It means ligaments. And if you've ever torn a ligament, you know you're, you don't work so well after you do that. Love is the ligament of the Christian life. It bonds you to other people, other people that don't look like you, who don't act like you, who may not even be American. <gasps> Love bonds us together in perfect unity. By the way, if you didn't know it, I'm very proud to be American. I have family that died in Pearl Harbor. I had family that passed away on the beaches of Normandy. I had a, my mom's cousin who parachuted in on D-Day and died. But Jesus is still more important than all of that. I will pledge to the flag. I was excited at Disney World when they were taking the flag down. They did a full ceremony and I pledged to the flag as it went away. But that's not my most important focus. Disconnection habits. Be shallow. Go for debatable truths. Talk in your flesh. I'm right, you're wrong. That's when you know you're in the flesh. By the way, if you're typing and you feel your face tighten, that's not the spirit. If you look like that Kermit the Frog meme, that's not the spirit. If you're driving like me, okay, I'm just, that's enough. Selfish and self-centered. Connection habits, deeper discussion, looking for spiritual truths, spirit and life focus. By the way, there's a thousand encouraging scriptures that you can just encourage people with, and bless them. Love-centered, God-centered. This week I had somebody call me and say, my husband's really discouraged, can you come talk to him? So I went to the house, sat down with them. Eight years ago, for those of you who don't know it, I almost died. Had diverticulitis and ended up actually having a colostomy bag. The whole deal was septic. As I started to talk to this man, he's been through a lot of the same things and worse. And as I talked to him at some point, I said, you know, I know it's just really discouraging. Because some days you start to feel better. You think you're doing great and you do a little bit. And then the next day you feel worse than you did before you tried to do anything. And he said, yeah said, it's okay. You just keep going. It'll get better. You're going to have bad days as you're trying to recover. When you're coming out of the hospital and whether or not you're struggling emotionally or physically today, it's the same way for you. Some days you'll be like, oh, I'm finally over my depression. And then the next day, Bruh. or if you've just had a surgery, oh, I'm finally feeling better. 
sure. And then the next day, oh, it's worse than I felt before the surgery. You just keep going. God never wastes a hurt. And the very things you've been through are the very things you can sit with people by the well and say to them, I'm sorry. I know that's hard. I can't imagine how that struggle is. Empathize with people that are hurting. If somebody tells you today, my team lost, don't just look at them and go, oh, well, who cares about football anyway? You know what you say to them? I am really sorry. And most likely they'll do like my friend did and say, it's just a football game. But they might not. But be there for them anyway. Love goes out of their way. I hope that all of us can go out of our way to value the people around us, to discover ways to relate and discuss deep spiritual truths. If you're here today and you've never given your life to Jesus Christ, you can do that today. I'll be here after the service. If you're watching online, you can send us an email, a note. I'd love to talk to you about what it means. What does John 3.16 mean that God loved the world that he sent Jesus? So whoever believes, whoever surrenders to him, the Bible says, understanding that he died and rose again to forgive us. Why? Because we're all messed up. And when we follow him, he gives us eternal life. That life starts now. My prayer is you'll be better at relationships, not because you have your act together, but because you know you don't. And so when somebody fails and falters and you think, well, that was kind of dumb. I've done dumber things. And then you can have a relationship with people and lift them up. That's my prayer for you and my prayer for me. Let's close in prayer today. Father, thank you for this time today. I thank you for your love for us in the middle of... Lord, sometimes we have to admit we all get prideful about what we believe or think that has nothing to do with anything important. So forgive us for those days. Lord, help us to love people more than we love the things that we value so often. And Father, I pray more than that, we would love you with all of our heart, soul, and mind. Lord, help us to repent when we treat people the wrong way, when we struggle with anger and frustration and division. Lord, just forgive us. Help us to walk in your love. May we, like the early Christians, be called Christians because of our love for each other. We thank you for this time today. In Jesus' name, amen.